Before you watch this video, I highly recommend watching my other video on what is Web3, as it explains really exactly what Web3 is. In this video, I'm going to focus less on what it is, and more about general questions that people have asked me in the past few months, and trust me, it's going to be interesting answering these questions. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that anyone can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to answer a bunch of Web3 questions that are frequently asked, such as, what will the future of Web3 look like? How is Web3 better than Web2? How much does a Web3 dev earn? And how hard is it to become one? So first off, what is Web3? In case you haven't seen our first video to a million views on this channel, let me explain Web3 in a few seconds. Web 3.0 uses the technology of cryptocurrency alongside the current protocols of Web 2.0. Now if that was too simple, basically Web3 integrates cryptographic keys to prove ownership of certain digital assets like websites or game items or personal information that's shared on the internet. Now the next question that usually comes up is people say, what's so bad about Web 2.0? Apart from centralization, Web 2.0 is actually really great. Which which is why we've used it for so long. In fact, what most people call Web 3.0 didn't actually start entering the public thought until around a year or two ago with the surge of other new technologies like crypto and DeFi. However, as many users are becoming educated on the downfalls of centralization, they see Web 3.0 as a solution to avoid big corporations dominating the world. The main concerns of Web 2.0 are that big data companies are constantly collecting and mining information about you, so much so that they may know more about you than you do. Even though this data is anonymized, if someone could connect this data to you, many people would be concerned. In fact, one of the big concepts of Web3 is online privacy and owning the information that you give to these big corporations. For example, when you use Google or Facebook, you're giving up all kinds of data that you may not even be thinking about, from the amount of time that you use an app to the location that you use it. Your data may even be connected with other people around you and their accounts, basically associating you with them. Or maybe your account can be tagged with things that interest you, like camping or chess or maybe a pet that you own. Some of the technologies of Web3 are helping to reduce this, so that we have more privacy online. The next problem is, what problem is Web 3.0 solving? So, as I just said, the two problems that Web 3.0 is solving is mostly personal privacy and asset ownership. Now, I'm going to cover both of these really quick. Basically, instead of being attached to an email address, like Theodore at whiteboardcrypto.com, I could instead be attached to a specific wallet address, or even a domain that points to a wallet address, from which all of my actions on the internet have to be confirmed by me. Nobody else could fake my transactions or social media posts, or share things, or act as me unless they had my private key. Since it's really easy to create a private key and thus a new address, Web 3.0 allows people to create many different online identities very easily, and the goal is not to have one company like Google be able to track your every move. In all honesty, this topic probably deserves its own video. Now the second part of the Web 3.0 revolution is asset ownership. So what if you could choose who you sold your private data to? Maybe you have a backlog of a bunch of search history. Well, normally Google would just take this data that you typed into Google and then sell it to advertisers without even asking you. What if you could instead sell it to companies that you wanted to and actually generate revenue from that, like $10 or a $50 a month payment? For example, maybe you only wanted Chewy.com to see your browsing history, or maybe you only wanted Amazon.com to see your purchase history. Well, with Web 3.0, this could be possible. You could choose who you sell your data to and for how much. Another really interesting question is, will everything be Web3? There's a ton of hype around Web3 on things like Twitter. And the simple answer is, not everything's going to be Web3, and it shouldn't be Web3. So one of our biggest problems in the world of crypto is people finding something cool and then going, oh my goodness, people are going to use this. In reality, nobody wants their coin or their token or their NFT, or even worse, nobody needs it. And since nobody needs it, what it is is basically a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Well, with Web3, it solves a specific problem, and a big part of that problem is ownership of web assets. Whenever you make a tweet, Twitter owns it. Whenever you share a link on Facebook, Meta owns it. Whenever you post a video on YouTube like this, Google technically owns it. 
Now I know it's my content, I created it, but guess what? Google can choose to delete it. They can choose to show it to a billion people. And if they wanted to, and they do, choose to give me money so that I am incentivized to continue to make more videos, Google can do that. Even scarier, Google could take this video and change it. They could change what I say. Well, the technology of Web 3.0 makes it so that I truly own this piece of web content, not the publishing platform. And one of the ways that it does this is through the use of an immutable blockchain. But if I started talking about that, this video would get really technical really quickly. Another problem that Web 3 solves is related to digital identity. Now, there is a very large part of the web that the ideas of privacy and asset ownership will not be wanted or needed. And because of this, they will not involve Web 3. For example, I don't need to prove that I own a dog or who I am simply by using Google to view how much should I feed my dog. I mean, actually, if just browsing privacy is what we're after, we can actually reach a decent amount of web privacy without the Web 3.0 tools simply by using a web browser like Brave or Chrome with a few extensions, or if we wanted to get really technical, something like Tor. What it really comes down to is that in fact, most of the web traffic includes people searching for information, like what food to feed their dog, how much water is in a pool, or what a blockchain is. It's basic educational information, and the tools that Web3 offers don't really add any extra value to that experience. They're not solving a problem related to that. Think about it like this. Web3 will mostly be used for platforms and tools that you originally used an email address and password for. Instead of using those, instead, you will now use a public and private key to sign and verify things. Things like banks, social media, email accounts. These are the specific places where Web3 will shine because there's a problem. And the problem is that these companies have your data and they're selling it. And that's what Web3 is intending to solve. But if you think about it, the companies out there that Web 3.0 works well with, you know, the bank, social media, and email accounts, those companies don't want Web 3 because it'll take away their revenue sources. So think about it. Facebook is a company that wants profits. So it'll only integrate Web 3.0 if it makes the company more money. In reality, digital ownership usually refers to people owning their own data, which isn't exactly Facebook's track record. So they'll probably want to look like they're letting you own your own data data without actually giving you control. Even more so, do you think Google wants to get rid of their billion dollar advertising machine? Because Google's ad tracking and the online privacy of Web3 don't really mix well. So the answer to the question, will everything be Web3, is no. Only a few things will be Web3. And the things that will turn into Web3 applications will be fighting mega corporations. Anyways, now that we're halfway through this video, I wanted to share with you a gift that I have for anyone getting started in Web3. But before I explain the free gift, let me explain Unstoppable Domains. Now, Unstoppable Domains is a project that's aiming to create domain addresses, but for your crypto wallets. So basically, instead of asking you to pay me some long address with numbers and a whole bunch of letters, I can basically just say, hey, could you send me $10 to whiteboard.crypto? And then behind the scenes, it'll redirect that money into my wallet. I've actually made an entire video on them before, and I really like the product that they're offering. In fact, I think getting and setting up a Web3 domain is the easiest step to get started with Web3 technology. Now, I said that there was a gift, and here's the gift part. If you have a Web3 domain, and you send it to me in an email, I'll simply reply with a welcome to Web3.0 PDF that I've put together for someone like you. It includes a ton of other questions that I couldn't stick in this video, and you get pictures, guides, and a ton of information. So basically, to get that, if you've already have an unstoppable domain, or even an ENS domain, you just have to email it to theodore at whiteboardcrypto.com. And if you don't have one, now's a great time to get one. There's a link in the description below where you can claim one. It's super easy to set up, and you can even pay with crypto. Recently, they've added free mints on the Polygon network. I know this is kind of sounding like an ad, but there's a psychological part of owning a domain main and taking the first simple steps to get started with Web3 that'll be useful to a ton of people. So I figured this little gift that I put together would be a great way to incentivize people to take their first step. Plus, I do earn a portion of every purchase made with the link in the description below. Moving on, let's get into the question, will Web3 make me rich? So it is of my own personal opinion that Web3 is very similar to the dot-com boom, where new technology is being established and right now there's a lot of silly things out there. Do I think my children will be staying their NFTs or logging into their fridge with a public key? Probably not. But do I think this is the beginning of a decade that will change a lot of how the internet works? 
Yes. So back to if Web3 will make you rich using statistics, it will probably not. However, if you're one of the very few developers who creates something that serves a lot of people and adds value to their life or makes them happy, it will be very likely that you'll be paid in proportion to the value that you create for them. In most cases, being early to Web3 won't make you rich. Owning your own data and selling it to another company probably won't bring you in $50 a month. It'll probably bring you in about $3. So if you want to get rich with Web3, you're going to have to put in a ton of work and thought behind it because there are tons of people out there chasing the same money who may be smarter or harder working than you. Speaking of that, let's move on to talking about being a Web3 developer. So I get asked this question a lot. How hard is it to be a Web3 developer? The question is a really interesting one, and it's one that's really difficult to answer. So being a Web3 developer isn't really an easy or a hard question. It's more of on a spectrum. I mean, it's really hard to be a great 1% Web3 developer, but it's pretty easy to be an average Web3 developer. You just have to have a little bit of background in programming. The switch from regular programming to Web3 programming isn't difficult. It's just learning a few new ideas, concepts, and syntaxes. On the other hand, if you have no experience of programming logic or creating any of your own web applications, even if those applications were simply copied from a tutorial, there's going to be a pretty decent learning curve, and it's going to be more difficult than if you already knew another programming language. Basically, once you understand basic program logic, how syntax changes among different languages, and how to Google stuff to make it work, you you could probably learn with some homemade projects fairly quickly about how to be a Web3 developer. It's not that difficult to be a Web3 developer, but it's really hard to be a great Web3 developer. Next, let's get into one of the longer questions. What does a Web3 developer get paid? So recently, I've had the privilege of talking to a ton of Web3 developers themselves. I mean, to answer this question, what I could do is I could copy some data from Indeed or Salary.com and share what they've collected. Or I could even go so far as to go to Reddit and spit out the same information. But in this video, I wanted to share some real-world examples of what Web3 developers actually get offered. Here at Whiteboard Crypto, we have a paid product called Whiteboard Crypto Club where members get access to a ton of premium tutorials that cover over 10 blockchains now, and we're always adding more videos. But you might be asking, why is this relevant? Well, for the people who either become lifetime or yearly members, they actually get a one hour phone call with me and we can talk about whatever they want to. <laughs> so far, my calendar has been booked for about three full months now, and the next month is already full. But each day, I try to make two calls, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Due to this, I've talked to a ton of people, and some of them have been developers. I always ask about their salary, their workload, and the current projects they're working on just to get an idea of what the market is currently like. I can say that I've seen a wide range of salaries out there. Some are for short-term $2,000 gigs, while others have been offered $160,000 salaries. Now, the salaried positions are usually the best jobs because they include a steady income and you get to continually improve your code, while the smaller gigs have hard deadlines and often the code base requires updates. Either way, your salary as a Web3 developer I've noticed has come down to three main levers. The first is your skill level, and this is simply how good of a developer you are. Surprisingly, this one actually matters the least at least from what I've found. You just have to be good enough to land the job. Secondly, is the list of projects that you've worked on and can show. So it's kind of like a portfolio. It's really important to be able to show that you've worked on past products, as most employers won't want to take a chance on a new developer, when they could instead pay a little bit more to an experienced developer working on a similar project. So lastly, after having skills and some experience, the lever that's most important is your ability to market yourself. So a large percentage of the people that I've talked to that actually got web three jobs either got them from Twitter or LinkedIn. Your ability to market yourself as a good, experienced, and interesting developer is just as important as actually being a good, experienced, and interesting developer. Again, I can't give you really specific numbers on what a Web3 developer earns, but I can say that the better resume you have and the better you are at marketing yourself, even if you're just an average programmer, your income opportunities will greatly improve. Just so I've collectively answered this question, it's fairly easy to get a $60,000 a year your job in the world of Web3. An average Web3 job usually composes of around $100,000 a year, and if you nail all three points that I just mentioned, you could score yourself a $250,000 a year job. 
If you're interested, I've actually left a link below of a place where you can check out current minimum and current maximum Web3 salaries. Now, of course, there's going to be outliers of people who actually go out and develop their own tools or protocols as a form of an entrepreneur, and those people are going to earn millions of dollars per year. But again, those are outliers. By the way, if you're interested in learning how to actually use Web3 applications, the ones that are already out there, you should consider joining Whiteboard Crypto Club, that club I mentioned earlier, which has a ton of tutorials on interacting with specific Web3 dApps. Right now, I'm still giving every member $20 of Ethereum to jumpstart their journey, and like I mentioned before, yearly and lifetime members get calls with me. You can check the description below if you want to learn more about the specifics of the club and what else members get access to. Another question that I get fairly often is how far along is Web 3.0? Well, to be fair, you can never really judge the duration of something as it is happening. Only when the project is finished can you compare where you were currently. Now with this being said, not many people know about Web 3 technology or the problem that it solves. Many say the years 2020 to 2025 will be the so-called early years, where devs are still working out bugs and perfecting the user experience. I mean, if you think about it, the internet only started to catch on a mere 20 years ago, so it's easy to see how quickly this technology can grow and advance. The last question I have is what will it take to move everyone to Web 3.0? Some people around the world don't even have reliable internet access yet, so it's going to be very difficult to answer this question. To many, claiming a crypto domain is a good first step of ownership in the Web3 space, although it's technically not required. As this technology evolves and it becomes clear how much better it solves certain problems, it will probably take time and an easier user interface to see mass adoption. I'm in the crypto space currently, so it's really easy to look around and see a ton of people using it. But when I look at my personal family and friends, quite a few of them have not even heard of DeFi, which is a core pillar of Web 3.0. So it's really difficult to answer this question with a specific date in mind. Anyways, as I end this video, I want to remind you that I'm offering a Welcome to Web 3.0 PDF to anyone who emails me their Web3 crypto domain. You can just send it to Theodore at whiteboardcrypto.com and I'll try to send you the PDF back within 12 hours. I'm sure after posting this video, I'll get a ton. But if you don't have one, there's an affiliate link you can join within the description from Unstoppable Domains and it'll support the channel. I think the cheapest option is around $5, but I personally like the .crypto ones that are around $10. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really hope that maybe you've learned something. And most of all, I hope to see you in the next video.